I have modified this recumbent bicycle to no longer have its console. And the reason I did this is first off, I don't like the console in the way of being able to watch TV, but second off, the console wasn't working to change the resistance anyway. So I removed it and I added a simple circuit that allows me to control the resistance without any of the console silliness. And I'm gonna quickly explain how that works so that you can do the same thing for your bike, either if you don't like the console or if the console no longer correctly controls the resistance. All you need is a piece of hardware like this. It's a two-way switch with three plugs and a couple of double A's and a little bit of wire and soldering. So how does it work? So this cable here and this other cable here go down into the guts of the machine. But the only part that we really care about is this big fat one here and it has two wires. Those two wires are connected directly to the motor inside the recumbent bicycle and that motor moves the magnet. Moving the magnet in one direction increases resistance, moving in the other direction decreases it. So all you need to do is apply instantaneous electricity to those wires in the proper polarity to change the resistance. You don't need to keep electricity on the wires in order to have resistance, it's only necessary to change it. And thus, it's very simple to build a simple circuit that will do that for you. Sorry if I've said the word simple too many times. Here's what the final product looks like. Basically, you've got a switch here that indicates if you're increasing or decreasing the resistance, and then I've got a momentary switch, that small silver thing, to actually make the change happen. And I did that so that it wasn't possible to just leave it in one particular direction uh, constantly trying to run the motor inside there to increase the resistance. There's other ways you could do it, but I like this solution. So how is it wired? Well, I can try to show you what it looks like inside this box, but as you can see, it's kind of a challenge to do that. So let's just talk about it in the abstract with this handy dandy example. So the way this switch works is that these two sets of connectors can either be connected to these set of connectors or this set of connectors, depending on which way you flip the switch. So what we do is we connect these two middle pins to this set of pins in the plug. Those go to the motor. And then we just need to make it so that when we flip the switch in one direction, it gives us one polarity on those driver pins, and when you flip it in the other direction, you get a different polarity. So, specifically what you want to do is hook up positive to this pin, and positive to this pin, and negative to these two pins. Or whichever, but the important part is that they switch. So then when you have the switch connected to this side, you get positive here and negative here, and then when you switch it over to this side, you're going to get the reverse. And so now, whenever you make the switch complete the connection, you apply voltage to the motor and it changes the resistance. Now in this particular case I've got a switch that doesn't have a middle point. There are versions of this switch that will sit in the middle and will connect no pins. That might be the simplest circuit, but since I didn't have that switch and also because I didn't want to forget and leave it in this mode, I added a second button, this one here, and what it does is it interrupts, or actually it completes the circuit so that it actually can transfer the voltage from the battery pack to the motor. And here is the battery pack, just a pair of double A's. So you can see how it's all kind of connected here. It's a reasonably uh, compact collection of wires. It's not ideal. Uh, you know, you could build something much fancier, maybe even stow it inside the elliptical. There is some space, but this was an easier solution. All right. Obviously, if you've never done any kind of electronic stuff before, this might be a bit beyond you, but if you own a soldering iron, you can do this. It's very easy. And the end result is you can now completely control the resistance of this bike without any console, and it will stay at the resistance that you set it to until you try to change it. You no longer need any kind of uh, oversized batteries. You no longer need an AC to DC adapter. You just need a pair of double A's and this simple circuit. So I hope that helps at least one person in the world make their Nordic track or pro form cumbent bicycle be usable without a console 
or disusable at all if the console is broken on yours. Okay, thank you, and please leave comments if you have any thoughts about this.